Why can't mainstream psychiatry or psychology heal bipolar disorder? Why do religions continually demonize mental illness? Why is the experience of a manic episode treated as meaningless when it feels so meaningful? The answer to these and many other questions is quite simple really. We are still evolving. Evolution used to be a word on the tip of everybody's tongue when we were growing into the modern world. Remember Charles Darwin and survival of the fittest and all that? And certainly it looked like uh, for a time there with the advances of science that clearly evolution was in progress and we were certainly making material progress. There's no, no doubt about that. However, uh, in my opinion, starting in the 1980s, people started to look around and wonder what exactly we were doing on the planet. Is this the way we want to evolve? We're working harder than ever. We're totally stressed out. We're stuck in traffic. We're polluting the environment. We're destroying all the wildlife on the planet. And I know I'm not the only one who's looked around and thought, you know, is this evolution? Something has gone seriously wrong. Maybe at some point in history we had made a wrong turn somehow. Or maybe we should have stayed in agricultural pre-industrial society. Or maybe we should have stayed in tribal society where we were one with nature even if we didn't know how to read. So with all this said, I was greatly relieved to find the work of Ken Wilbur, who starting with his book, A Brief History of Everything, uh, really set me straight about how we are evolving and that while scientific materialist society, the society that really runs our world today, is clearly in decline, what are emerging are more open, loving, spiritual levels of consciousness. And these levels of consciousness are absolutely critical for helping us to understand why we've had this huge upsurge in bipolar disorder in the last 15 years and how for the first time since we left that tribal Garden of Eden, we are actually able to heal bipolar disorder without psychiatry in the midst of our own friends and in our own homes. So what are these so-called spiritual levels of consciousness? Well, like Ken Wilber, I prefer to borrow from the work of Dr. Claire Graves, who spent his entire career sociologically verifying the existence of these different levels of consciousness on our planet. His theory of consciousness he calls spiral dynamics. Dr. Graves discovered that there are basically seven different realities on our planet today, seven different levels of consciousness where people work and live and think and operate from seven completely different perspectives. He also anticipates that even higher levels of consciousness will emerge in the future. As you will see once I get into the descriptions, these levels of consciousness really function almost like a series of Russian dolls where in the beginning of existence we started with this very limited sense of consciousness of who we are and then at certain points in our evolution we in a sense shed the skin or shed the shell of this Russian doll in order to have a deeper more meaningful experience of life. Now I know some people are going to have a problem with this idea of hierarchy being here, but what you need to understand is that without hierarchy there is no growth. Think about your own life. Are you the same person now that you were when you were 10 years old or when you were 5 years old? No, you've grown in your evolution of consciousness. And people understand that when we talk about growing up through childhood, but when we actually look at adults and we say, oh, one adult is more conscious than another adult, then we get into problems. We clearly understand this with our education system, where we start in first gear, like grade school, then we move up to high school, then on to university, and then possibly a master's program. A master's program, in this sense, is clearly better than grade school. So while we get this with our education system, the idea that you personally have a limited level of consciousness which needs to grow or will grow eventually many people or most people will find very disturbing even I find it disturbing unfortunately developing your own consciousness isn't always as easy as simply picking up a book sometimes we really need to let our old ways die and break out of that shell or in this case our box so here's a quick introductory look at the seven different levels of consciousness introduced in spiral dynamics Level 1. Archaic. Back 50,000 years ago, the world was a very dangerous place, and all these guys could do was just fight to stay alive day to day. And how did they survive? Well, just on their instincts. They didn't have a brain to think too much, so their focus was just get food, water, warmth, have sex, safety, find a cave. That's it. It didn't get much deeper than that for the caveman. Level 2. 
tribal. Now what's so wizardly about the tribal level of consciousness? Well, 10,000 years ago, when the tribal level was very strong, these people saw the world in an entirely magical way. Now it wasn't always good magic, but it was always magic. And the magic was used to influence the spirits, the spirit world, which was everywhere. So the big mission in their life was to keep the spirits happy so that the tribe could be safe. So in order to keep them happy, a big focus of their lives were obeying the spirits, being very obedient, and as well obedient to their ancestors, their chief, their elders, their entire tribe. They needed to respect and honor the tribe. And part of that involved participating in the sacred rituals and rites of passage ceremonies for the tribe. Level 3. Feudal. Freed from the constraints of the tribe, my world now is all about me, and my mission is to get whatever I want. And doing that ain't easy because it's a jungle out there, so you need to demand respect. And with so much of their focus on self-gratification, these guys know how to party better than any other level. That is until level 4 comes along, because the traditional level of consciousness will show you the error of your ways. At this point, the world becomes purposeful. And your mission is to live your life with a sense of morality. I mean, what's going to happen to you after you die? Are you going to go to hell? Or are you going to go to heaven? So at the traditional level, people start to control their impulsivity by following the moral code of their religion. And hopefully, if they've been good, they'll get salvation in the afterlife. And now, even though there's a lot of guilt that comes with this level, because you know you're a sinner, you know you've been a bad boy, uh, in the long run, it builds character. It really does. So while religion does build character with its morality, some of the beliefs associated with these religions they don't have any scientific basis. So at level 5, the modern level, it is science that becomes the religion. Our new world becomes about achieving success, not only in our eyes, but especially in the eyes of others. The new mission becomes to play the game to win, and to play by the rules, unless you can cheat without getting caught. At this point, both societies and individuals prosper with the advances that come from technology and a marketplace that is highly competitive. Unlike previous levels, change becomes a natural, ongoing part of life with constant innovation, and the whole point is to create the good life. Screw the planet. Recognizing that for many of us, the ways of the modern world have meant the internet superhighway to nowhere, along comes level six, the postmodern level. And at this point, for the first time ever, all of a sudden, it seems like we can see the world from many truths. Up until now, every level has thought that it just had the answer. But these people see the world in pluralistic terms. Many truths, many moralities. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who knows? So the mission here is to bring harmony through understanding. And for the first time ever, we're really listening to each other. And for the first time since science told you that God doesn't really exist, you start to awaken to a new sense of spirituality, and you return to the deeper questions of the meaning in life, and start to question your material focus on just solely money, status, and power. Like, is that the only reason we're here, just to survive? And along with checking out other cultures and other ways of doing things in your quest, you might just step in and try and help the planet Earth heal a little bit along the way. Now level 6 is convinced there's many ways to look at the world, many truths, but there's only one problem. None of the other levels see it that way. So they're always fighting with them. They fight with people for being narrow-minded. So as a result, they're fighting with just about 80% of the world's population, because for the rest of us, there are no other realities. There's my reality. Screw the rest. You're all wrong. And that's part of what makes level 7 so interesting, is that for the first time in human history, we have a growing population of people who are not fighting with other levels of consciousness. Part of the reason is they see value in all the other levels. They see value in multiple perspectives, in morality, in success, in egotistic impulse. They see value in survival and security. Every level has its reason for being, and every level has value. So at level 7, people stop being so damn manipulated. They stop trying trying to force people to be what they're not. They leave people as they are, and when there's an opening for them to grow, they try and help them out. That's about it. Also, unlike the other levels, they're, they're not so focused on trying to become something. They're not trying to do things, to strive to become something better than they are. They recognize that the joy of life and success in life come from putting all of your focus and all of your energy into where you are right now. Just like Eckhart Tolle's book says, The Power of Now. So that's why I'm calling this level The Power of Now Level. The world they see is one of integrated levels of consciousness where each has value, and your mission is to just be. In practical terms, this being, just being, means putting a lot of passionate involvement into what you're doing right now, but not with a striving attitude, trying to be something you're not. This attitude brings a very flexible approach to life, so you're not thinking, okay, I need to do this in order to get this. 
in this way life becomes much more spontaneous because the focus isn't so much in worrying about what's the correct way to do things but in simply which way is going to work best and with a lot less worrying in your life life becomes much more playful and creative it's almost like you can pour everything into what you're doing but you're not so worried about the outcomes okay that's it that's your seven levels of consciousness now in my next video in this series i'm going to demonstrate how different levels of consciousness interpret mental illness particularly bipolar disorder and why people at the higher levels of consciousness are in a position where they can help support people with bipolar disorder so that they can heal